In this Adobe InDesign lesson, we will continue to work with objects. This lesson is still in lesson 4 as it is a continuation from yesterday's lesson. And we are working on a four page newsletter. We'll add text and images and make several modifications to the objects in this document. Our main goal for this lesson is to resize and move images, adjust space between frames and add metadata captions to graphic frames. All right, here's our image. This is the image yesterday. So we stop in this particular design here. And this is where we'll continue with our lesson today. What we're doing next is uh, we need to resize and reposition this or those images so they will fill the graphics frame and are cropped correctly. Unlike text objects, a graphics frame and its content each have their own bounding boxes, which means that the content and frame for any place graphic are separate elements. To be able to do that specific task, we'll choose the selection tool here from the tools panel. We'll position the pointer or the mouse cursor over the content grabber within this image, the one that I have encircled. When the pointer is within the content grabber, a hand icon is displayed. So click to select the frame's contents. It's actually the image itself. In this image, we can compare the difference before clicking and after clicking it. So let's be careful here as this is quite tricky. While holding down the shift key, drag the center bottom handle to the bottom edge of the graphics frame and we'll also do the same uh, process with the top edge of the image. In here we'll discuss a little bit about the function of the shift key in this particular step. So while holding down the shift key, it actually maintains the proportion of the graphic so that it is not distorted. Again, the shift key maintains the proportion of the graphic so that it is not distorted. This certain feature of the shift key is applicable to other applications as well. If you have used Photoshop or animation or Adobe Illustrator, if it can even be useful in Adobe Premiere Pro and other Adobe apps. The shift key has still uh, the same function in changing that particular graphic. So if we pause briefly, let's go back to our image. If we pause briefly before we start dragging, we'll see a ghosted image of the crop areas of the graphic content, a feature called dynamic preview. So in here I have indicated with an arrow sign, as you can see, um, I hope that's visible. It's actually a red, um, it's, it's a red uh, line, as you can see from here. And that's our dynamic preview. All right, going back to our document, let's make sure that the image entirely fills the graphics frame. As we can see from this image here, the graphics now fills the entire frame. Now let's do the same process with the other two pictures here. I have um, put an arrow. Now three of these images have filled the entire graphics frame and so let's move on. Let's try different methods for the remaining photos. So we'll try a different method for these images here. Make sure that it is uh, selected with the selection tool. Okay, choose the selection tool. Let's apply the same process for the remaining pictures or the, the one encircled in blue. So what we're going to do here, let's choose the object menu and go to fitting. 
then choose fill frame proportionally. So the process is applied to these three images. Next, we are going to adjust the space between um, the, the, the images to give the grid arrangement uh, visual tweak. We'll use the gap tool, which will let you select and adjust the space between frames. So that's the usage of our gap tool. We'll select the view menu and fit page in window. Then again, we'll zoom in uh, to this, these images. Then select the gap tool. That's actually the fourth, fourth tool from the selection tool. With the use of the gap tool, we'll adjust our images like the ones we can see from these images here. So certain tweaks might help. Hold down the shift key to make adjustments. With the gap tool, press shift plus control for Windows and shift command for Mac to adjust the gutter widths. We'll choose window menu again and fit spread in window. Now we have the full view of our document and they are now arranged according to the columns that we have in here. So we can save this particular step of our document. Next, we'll add a metadata captions to graphics frame. So with the use of selection tool, we'll select all six images. Of course, with the help of the shift key again, we can shift click and select all six of them. Once selected, let's click the links panel icon. And we'll notice that six images have been selected in the links panel. So that means they're active inside that panel. Let's go to the panel menu for the links panel. Go to captions, then choose uh, caption setup. In the cut Caption Setup dialog box will make some modifications here and please take note of these changes. In the text box, add photo by, so we need to type, make sure there's a space after the word by, encircled in red. We'll choose author from the metadata box. There's actually a drop down menu you can choose from. So we'll choose author from there. So leave the text uh, text box, just leave it blank. And in the position and style, under alignment box, choose below image. In the paragraph style, choose photo credit. And the op offset box type uh, 0p2. Then we can choose the OK button. Let's click the links panel again, choose the links panel menu, and then go to captions and generate static captions. Now each of the graphic files contains a metadata element named author, which stores the name of the photographer. So this metadata information is used when the photo credit caption is generated. Now we can deselect all and save our file. So next meeting, we'll place and link graphics frames. So I hope that we have learned how to make graphics adjustments in Adobe InDesign, as well as adjust spaces and add metadata captions to our graphics. So we'll continue to design this newsletter in our next meeting. Thank you.